Hello everyone, today we'll be adding translations to our React app. In our last video, which has two ads apparently, which I get zero dollars of, I ended off with persistent storage. I don't actually use Edge for watching videos, I use Firefox for that. But anyways, today, right after that video, I added translations to my app. And even today, I, I optimized it a bit. So how do we do that? When we search it up, we get we come across this module called React IT Next, and their description is called internalization, which has nothing to do with which most people probably don't even know what that word means. I don't know what that word means, and it says done right. Okay, done right. They say it's as easy as npm install React IT Next, but if you look at their code so sandbox down here, it's anything but. Look at this, it's not as simple, okay? And what I realized is that I've taken this code and adapted it. So the first thing we wanna do is actually install these three packages. It, they are IAT Next, IAT Next Browser Language Detector, and React IAT Next. I'm actually not sure if the, oh boy. The thing I don't like about the lock files is that they're huge. So if we look at their dependencies, we will notice that... Okay, hold on. Did I... So... There's one thing you'll notice that there is no IATX browser language detector. But anyways, it's still a top level module that we need. So we just do yarn add those three modules. And then you'll be thinking, okay, now what? And now we'll start on this file called i18n.js. This is a an adapted version of the one they provide. And I don't recommend you copy theirs, I recommend you copy mine and adapt from mine because I do a lot of the things that you'll need in your app. How, if you look at their app, it's not complex at all. It's simple and it's hard-coded. These buttons, they are hard-coded. My UI, this is not hard-coded. It uses the, the objects provided in i18n.js. And I couldn't get these resources from the app. So that's why I have exported two variables. One is the default language and one is translations. Default language is nothing but the language you want to fall back to. Okay, it makes sense. But you also want to set it as the default for the setting, the preferences code that I talked about in the last video, that I showed in the last video. So anyways, Translations, it's basically a follows two things. So the language code, translations, and then keys or phrases. How the code works is that you call get translation of in your code, and it'll look at this and it'll say, if the key exists for the language being used, then use the value for it. Otherwise, just use the string itself, okay? So that's why the French version is like big, but the English version is small because some of the, we don't want to be redundant or sorry, I don't want to be redundant. So I've decided to do it a multitude of ways, keys, no keys or phrases. So I, I've done it in my opinion. You can do it in whatever opinion you want, but that's how I did it. And it's really simple like that for me. Next, you want to go into your index.js and you wanna import that file that we just created. Now, what happens is that this module will get initialized. So that's why we do it. And now we can go to app.js and you wanna import two things. One, you wanna import use translation from React IAT Next. This will allow you to do call it and you can import, you can take two things from it, which is get translation of, which is T, and i18n, which is basically the module, which is important for result for getting the resolve language and also for the or for changing the language used by i18n, because 
it doesn't actually use the state variable. So you have to, you know, every time the state variable changes, you want to update the, you want to call change language. And if you remember in the last video, I talked about binding a state variable to code to run. And that's exactly what I've done. Every time set lang is called, local forge.setim happens and also change language happens. So that way I can call set lang in more than one place and I don't have to worry about adding this code every single time or adding a wrapper code. Anyways, what did I do? What else did I do? And I did use state, of course, as the resolve language. The language that is being used should be equal to the resolve language right now. Okay? The resolve language basically means that... I'll give you an actual example. On my system, the system language is en underscore ca. And this is nothing but English Canadian. Okay? What... Whether you want to support regions is up to you, but I don't support regions because someone's going to understand color if it's spelt with a U or without a U. It's only when you get to technical terms where something like truck, like a pick, like a actual semi, semi truck, something like that's going to mess someone up. If you don't live in America or Canada, you might not understand what that means. So anyways... It's not really a big deal. You know, I'm not a linguistic, okay? We're programmers. We're not linguists. <laughs> my friends are, my friends uh, praise Noam Chomsky, but I am, uh, I'm a programmer. I'm not a, ling ling yeah, I can't even, <laughs> exactly. Okay, anyways, uh, going back on topic, why do I even have this use effect? Where else does it happen? Where else do we change the language? And now I can actually explain the, the sick code over here, which I made. So this design is inspired from somewhere. It just popped up into my head, but I know I've seen something similar. It might not even have been for languages, but I was inspired by something and it popped up into my head to do it like this instead of having it in settings. So you can do it like this. Now I recommend you do it this way if you have four languages or less to support. If you have more than four languages, then you need to use a you should use a drop down with a globe icon beside it and then bind the on click on select to set lang but if you have less than four languages i su i suggest you do it this way because it'll improve the user experience and what i did from last time is i moved action icon into its own group i'm actually not sure if it was already in a group but that's what i did and i i moved the align right to be on the group itself. That's why I can call get language headers right in there and all those three items are aligned to the right. And get language headers is the function, I, I named it that because I couldn't find a better name. If you find a better name for it, just let me know when you change it, okay? It was just what I could come up with at the time. And what we want to do is remember that, remember that variable that we exported if you don't remember we already used default lang uh, when we were loading preferences but translations is this is where it's used we can dynamically create this this ui over here and we can do this by first iterating on the keys we map we create we map on the keys and what we want to do is if the language used right now is equal to that supported language, then we want to make it text, okay? We want to make it text not clickable. You can even, okay, I was gonna say you can go as far as to make it unselectable, but I am i don't know, I'm not a UX expert. I just, I view things from the way I use them and I'm a lazy person, so that's why I have high UX, but I, I'm not a UX professional where I know whether text should be selectable or not. That is very fine detail. I don't even think UX experts know the true answer for that because UX is not always objective. It is sometimes subjective. You have to be subjective at times, in my opinion, to get things right. If you're never subjective, you'll probably never get anything done because to do research requires time. And suppose it's as simple as this, 
yeah, I'd rather be subjective and do it right the way I feel like doing it rather than doing an entire study to figure out if this is preferred over a drop down. That's why I do it my way. But anyways, this link should be clickable. And what you want to do is bind it to set lang. Now, for it to be a link, you use anchor from Mantine. Okay, so if I, I import it from Mantine, okay. Now, what about the pipe? Now, the pipe is nothing but, it, you just add it right after any language if the language is not last. That's why there's nothing beside, there's nothing after French. But suppose we add a German. Now, I'm actually going to demo this. I'm not sure if it'll work, but you can see that I didn't even have to do much, right? Adding a language is that simple. I just added I just added it in one file and it auto updated. I didn't have to hard code it anywhere else. But you'll see that now there's pipes beside French and English, but not German, and that's because it's last. Wait, <laughs> I'm not sure if DE is German or like Dutch. Okay, <laughs> you know what? Hopefully no one gets mad at me for that. I'm pretty sure NL is Dutch and DE is German, like Deutsch or something, right? Because even my music player has has Dutch and I'm pretty sure the language code is NL. Okay, so anyways, one more thing to know is the fragment. You can use React fragments to instead of divs. Divs are can be redundant, so that's why I use fragments instead. Instead of even a list. I used to use lists back in 2020 when I started React. I would use lists instead of fragments or divs to return, you know, a single a one level one level elements. But I've learned that it's fragments that are that that's the proper way to do it. Okay? A fake element. Invisible element. <laughs> Okay, and lastly, hmm, lastly what? I think that's it actually. That's all for today. You can click like this. I guess I could say some other stuff, which is I've decided to make a GitHub repository for keeping these files because and it'll be called Modern Desktop App Tutorial. And it won't be a project, it'll be a tutorial on how to reproduce the template, which is this template, which is, you know, how to get things to, these are things you shouldn't worry about, right? I'm making these videos because you should not worry about it. You should not be spending time to do it. You should just be at the stage and then adding your content. That is how programming should be. You just do, press one button, and you just work on the content. Don't worry about things that are boilerplate. These tutorials I've made is all about boilerplate, right? I've made the tutorials on boilerplate so that when you create your app, you just copy the boilerplate and you work on it. You don't have to create the boilerplate. Creating the boilerplate should be one second, but today, for some reason in this scenario, with desktop apps, which is why I made my tutorials, my videos, it the boilerplate is beyond insane. I've made how many videos now? Four. There's going to be a fifth video actually right after this on the positioning of the window. I don't know when I'll make it. Probably, t probably tomorrow because I've spent too many times too many times recording this video. But anyways, I'll see you in the next one. It'll be about that.